In this video, I'm going to answer Sergio's question. Uh, Sergio left a question here a few weeks ago on my older video about using feed rules, and Sergio wants to know how he can use two different feeds in Merchant Center, so one feed for one campaign in his Google Ads account, and another feed for another campaign in his Google Ads account. So I'll answer how I would approach this, and then I'll give some more tips in this video, so stick around to learn more. So while you can use multiple feeds in a single Merchant Center account, I think it's a lot easier to just use one feed in most cases, not every case, but in most cases, to just use one feed because to segment different products into different campaigns, which is the ultimate goal of what Sergio is trying to do here, um, you can just segment products within the Google Ads account and it's, it's much faster, I think, to do it this way. Submitting two feeds can present a few problems like, for example, you might submit the same product twice, once in one feed and once in the other, and then that gets disapproved anyway. So I'll jump into how I do this right now. So I'll go to my Google Ads account and I'm gonna go back to, let's see, I actually am in this account. So I'm gonna look at two scenarios to segment products out into different campaigns. Um, you can't do uh, this inventory filter option, which is the first option that I'll show you in smart shopping campaigns, but you can in standard campaigns. So I'll go to a standard campaign first and show you the inventory feature, or sorry, inventory filter feature. So I'm just navigating in the dark gray column on the far left to a standard shopping campaign. And then in the light gray column, I'm going to go down to settings. And then under settings, there's a little blue drop down section that says additional settings and I'll click on that and right below the mouse or my mouse is inventory filter and an inventory filter what you can do um, is set a filter to certain products so only those products will be used in this campaign so by default it's set to no filter so I'll select filter and then I'll click down on all the different merchant center um, fields or attributes that I can use to filter by. And you can see there's brand, so I could put in my brand if there's different brands in my Merchant Center feed. Um, in my case, I have the same brand, so I'm going to use custom label zero. And I'll click on one of the custom label zero options. And that custom label zero is applied only to those 31 campaigns, or sorry, 31 products and once I hit save, now only those 31 products will show in my uh, standard shopping campaign. So let me jump now to the ad group. And then product groups uh, is the next place I wanna navigate in the light gray column. So I'm in product groups. And then now when I highlight or mouse over the product group, which is where all of the available products in this campaign are shown, I can see that there's just those 31. And from here, I can subdivide the products into finer groups, so say by item ID, etc. So let's just do that. So now I've got one product here segmented out, and then all the other products segmented out. But they're all the Grand Canyon um, custom label zero products. So that's a fast way to do that, and a safe way to do this with a standard shopping campaign. I say safe because if you filter, or sorry, if you use the inventory filter in the settings menu, you really can't accidentally put other products other than these in the campaign. Now, inventory filter is not available on smart shopping campaigns or performance max campaigns, so how would you do that there? So in my smart shopping campaign, under the same section, under settings, additional settings, inventory filter is not there. But that's fine. What I can do is instead just use the product uh, group segmentation that I would normally use. And so to do that, I'll go into the ad group. And then I'll go into product groups in the light gray column. And you can see I've already done this here, um, but let me clear this out. So I'll hit save. So here's all the products in the account, which are 182. But let's say I want to do the same thing and only show those Grand Canyon custom label zero products in this campaign. So what I'll do is I'll click um, the plus button 
to add a subdivision. And if you're not familiar with subdividing products, it's just a way to split up your products into separate product groups so that you can uh, give them different um, bids or targets, or in a smart shopping campaign so that you can simply exclude or include certain products. So I'll hit save after selecting all those. And now all my products are segmented by custom label zero, yet every custom label zero um, attribute is included here. So Appalachian, Grand Canyon, other, and then all the rest. And what I can do now, because I can't change the max CPC, it's a smart shopping campaign, what I can do is just exclude some. So let's just say I'll exclude these ones. But this is a little more time consuming. So if I wanted to accomplish what I did in the standard shopping campaign and only show the Grand Canyon products, then I could go back into Edit Subdivision, Clear All, only select Grand Canyon, hit Save. And then now I'm just going to show Grand Canyon because by default everything that I didn't select in the Product Group Subdivision menu, everything else by default is just set to excluded. So you can see if I mouse over exclude everything else in all products, I see 151 products in here, so that's everything but the Grand Canyon shirts. Um, these are all t-shirts, by the way. So everything that is a Grand Canyon t-shirt is uh, represented here. That's those 31 products again. So that is the fastest way that I think you can do this. Just use one feed and then segment out products within your Google Ads account using either an inventory filter option in a standard shopping campaign or in Performance Max or Smart Shopping campaigns, just use the product group subdivision option. If you have any other questions, like for example, how to import the Google Merchant Center feed into your Google Ads account, that's something I didn't cover in this video. Um, there's other videos on that. If you have other questions around Merchant Center or Google Ads, feel free to leave those in the comments below in this video, and I'll try to answer those questions too as soon as I can. So thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful.